what's going on, beautiful people? It's, uh, it's your host, Luke Jirasi. We're back for another episode of Free Game. We got a special guest, actually, one of my good friends, Drew Livingston here, creator of Urban Hip Tees. Um, and we, I guess that's probably a good segue. Like, I don't even know. How did you come up with the name and why and what is the meaning of it? Right, right. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on Free Game. Very happy to be here. My good friend, Luke Jirasi. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a play on words at first. You know, I was messing around. I, I could just take you back to the to the original story. Back in 2011, I kind of messed around with selling shirts online. Long story short, I, I never followed through. Uh, come 2020, I'm working from home. It's the pandemic, and I said, "Why not? You know, now's the time." So it it, it kind of started off as you know creating graphic tees with just catchy, cool sayings on shirts. And then it developed into, why don't I make my own brand? So I was playing around with some words. Urban hippie resonated with me. And what does urban hippie really mean? So I kind of created that. I could talk about that a little bit too. But um, yeah, urban hip tees was just a play on urban hippie. Okay. So you say you used to sell um, shirts back in 2011. What were you, like, what kind of shirts? No, I, I messed around with the idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, I messed around with the idea of sh- selling shirts in 2011. Did I ever tell you I sold shirts in, in grad school? No. Um, I actually stole the idea from my boy. Shout out Beans, Mike Malaleo. Um, when I went to... Did, no, did, <laughs> I always give credit. Um, I basically sold his idea. So um, when I was an undergrad, I don't know how much fucking money, but I know for college, these could make crazy money. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's going to school, I would suggest doing this. We went to a SUNY school, so that's in upstate New York right, school. Right, right. Um, went to SUNY Albany. And all I did was SUNY fucking Albany black and black le- black shirt with white letters for 10 bucks you just walk around and knock on doors and sell them the entire campus had like one to three was just eating it up, eating it up different just colors. killing it so then when i went to grad school i went to another suny school okay and i took the idea and did suny fucking oswego and walked around and just knocked on like doors and, and sold them nice um hey man it's a nice hustle that actually scott referenced it in my best man speech Oh, he he mentioned that in, in yeah he was like he was like when he was talking about like all the different random things i've done and he was like i remember when Luke was walking around selling shirts and people laughed. And then he ca- paid for his way through this. And it was wow. like. No, man. Fun fact, I did not know about you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just literally took his idea, did the colors white and green, and then just walked around knocking on doors and was like, yo, you want a shirt? Da, da, da. Damn. How, so local printer you found and just had someone. Yeah, I don't even remember. Screen print. Yeah. The the profit margin wasn't huge. Like I'm selling for 10. Or, I might have yeah, spent some mine for like 12 bucks. Might have been like five bucks a shirt, but sell 100 shirts. It's mm-hmm. And people kind of know you for it. You, you end yeah. up connecting with people. It's a cool way to just, hey, I'm it was out just, about anyway. It's a cool. Yeah, way to exactly. Just exactly. So it was, it was just people. kind of a, a cool little thing. Nice. Um, and then, so what inspired you to get started this time around if, if it, you didn't do it in 2011? I just went after it. I had a lot of time on my hands being home in the pandemic. You know, you're working from home, so you, you don't started have this in the pandemic? I started it during the pandemic, late 2020. So obviously, March pandemic hits. We get sent home from work. I'm working corporate recruiter job. They send us all home, and I just I just decided to go after it. So really, just following through was the big difference. Was the main difference. And technology, technology has come a long way. 2011, there's there's not print on demand, or there's 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 really only a traditional way to print. It's expensive. It's more time consuming. Technology made it easier as well, but. I just decided to go after it. I just. Do you utilize uh, social media? Love social media. Uh, Instagram. I'm more heavy on Instagram. Um, so yeah, the engagement the engagement's been good, man. I've been growing it organically, and that's that was my vision. Just grow it organically. See what I have. Wanted to create something cool, and basically create something. This is how I dress normally. I'm gonna dress like this anyway. Right. So to have people like what I do and buy it, you know, it just keeps inspiring me to create similar, similar shit. Okay, so that makes sense. A little backstory: um, Drew and I worked together back in like 2017, 18, 20, 2017, 18, selling insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you went back to doing what again? Uh, back to personal training. Okay, personal training. So then with the COVID, that obviously put a stop to it. Yep. So I went, I went back to being more corporate. I, I went to back to being a corporate recruiter. Okay. Yep. And then, um, so then you get started in this. Like, mm-hmm. what's your, do you have, 
and I don't know if you do you don't necessarily need one do you have an end goal like in mind like man just be as big as I can just have just continue to have fun with the brand and just grow right now it's more casual cool casual premium streetwear you can rock it at home you can go to a sports bar and be super comfortable with it you know Luke and I are both rocking the same lightweight hoodies it's honestly the most comfortable shit I've ever worn this and the t-shirt comfortable as shit that's what I like to hear but yeah it's it's casual and you could you know it's light enough to where you know I live in South Florida so obviously it doesn't get as cold as it does here so I made it lightweight purposely so you could rock it kind of year round you know if you're in the air conditioned room you could you could just rock it okay so, yeah. and then do you have like athletic gear obviously you're Good a sports question. guy big sports guy I'm big into movement that's the next evolution so when you ask me that that's like the personal training like like fitness gear yeah more dry fit you know I don't want to just put anything out and call it gym gear gym wear I want to I want to create something that has the qualities of like moisture wicking fabric so when you sweat you know, like, like Nike like dry fit would so, you are the t-shirts now are they decent for running yeah, you can. I mean, but they're 100 percent ring spun cotton, so they don't. So when you sweat it out, it's it responds differently than it would if it was moisture wicking. So you can. You're not wrong for it. But the stuff that I create and put out there is really made for people to treat it like you know, quality stuff. It'll last longer. It's uh, it's definitely super comfy. We we did a mushroom trip last night, which a few sure of us did. were actually wearing the the urban hip tees. Um, so you made that hasn't done mushrooms basically usually when you do it you want to wear something super you comfortable be super comfy so yeah. that i mean that's a good sign that everybody's wearing those absolutely high compliments yeah yeah <laughs> I feel, Both pun, pun intended yeah pun definitely intended pun intended um, yeah, yeah yeah so that i mean that was we had a, a very powerful journey last night um how many of us was there man there had to be eight ish eight uh, for those it's, of you that don't know, group. now I'm, I'm officially the head of a church, uh, Spirit of Phoenix, hmm. slash trademark name, Mushrooms to Heaven, went the legal route, now have legal protection with mushrooms, cannabis for sacramental pur- or sacred sacred purposes, um, sacramental, I guess, true, because yeah. it is the sacrament, um, and we just kind of really been taking it, and it's been uh, it's been awesome, so it's cool, like we had Drew Damn up. Proud. Damn proud of you, Luke. Thank you, thank you. We had Drew up, my boy <laughs> Vinny up, that I used to be a teacher with, and now he's doing Renovate It Right. Yeah, we had a good. We have a good crew. We got a good crew. Yeah, it was definitely fun times. It's was, it was good to see um, Vinny get back to it. I don't know what the right way to put it is. That's perfect. It's good to have Vinny back. Oh, yeah. the old Vin Duck. Vinny Miami, aka the Conscious Caveman. The Conscious Caveman. Um, he's a brand that he should brand he's, that. He's got the whole beard look. So yeah, man, Georgia is definitely different. The houses up here are different. The whole, the whole, you know, you're not in South Florida anymore. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nice change up. So, what did you, what did you think of the house, actually? Uh, your house is, is what I imagine. It's, it's, it's dope, man. It's, it's kind of like an old, older school style, you could tell, but it's been modernized. Yeah. You know, you got nature right in your backyard. It's, it's perfect for what we did last night. That's for sure. Yeah. And um, for those of you that haven't been in Georgia, um, or that have, to me, I absolutely love it because it, you get the four seasons, um. There's a bunch of, this is going to sound weird for anybody that lives anywhere outside of Florida, but there's a bunch of mammals. And after living in Florida for six years, you don't realize how much that you miss that. Like, yo, it's weird, but like your brain like registers with with mammals versus just seeing reptiles and lizards the whole time. Correct. Um, And in Florida, there was that. And then obviously the trees. I don't know. Mike might know. Um, I know they call this the the city in the forest. Um, City of trees. City, City of, of trees. trees. That makes sense. I was gonna say it, it, the air feels cleaner here. I don't know if it's all the trees, but yeah, it just, yeah. it's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it, it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. So what? Um, what is something that like let's say, Urban Hip Tees takes off? Where would you want to take it? I know you're a big music guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you currently sponsor. Yeah. So, I I link everything. I mean, my brand is a byproduct of who I am, how I grew up. I like to refer to myself as an MTV kid. You know, I grew up when MTV used to play videos and it was it was a various, various different artists, everything from Prince, Michael Jackson, Cyndi Lauper, Duran Duran. So I consider myself- Cyndi Lauper? Yo. I've never heard you listen to Cyndi Lauper. MTV played it. No, know. no. I, 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 you're I not going to really hear me rock Cyndi Lauper too much, but when it comes on, you know, it's nostalgic. I'm not knocking it. I, I listen to a lot of- Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, questionable music. Questionable music. We all have our questionable guilty pleasures in music. Um, but yeah, my brand is a byproduct definitely of music and the diversity of which I grew up around. You know, growing up in Miami, you know, diverse high schools, you know, black, white, Hispanic, you know, Filipino. Um, so that's kind of where the urban hippie, the urban hippie uh, message comes from. It's like all walks of life, any gender, any race, just people coming together and just in, yeah, we've all got the same. Goal. I remember you used to love Winwood because you always thought it was so diverse. I remember that. Because you'd be like, yo, there's black people, white people, da da da. Everything, old. everything. All, there's something for everybody in Winwood down in Miami. I was actually doing a pop up. You know, I did my first pop up at, at Woods Tavern. Rest in peace. Um, Woods, Woods, Tavern, it, Woods closed? Wood is officially closed, man. It's I knew that from Miami. That sucks to hear. It was a staple, I mean, probably since 2010, 2011. They yeah. closed, they reopened, and it just didn't work out. Long story short, I don't really fuck with Winwood anymore. It's changed, man. The last time I went down there, um, I went to buy Gabe, my boy, and me a drink, and it was eighteen bucks of vodka soda. What the fuck are we inside? As shots, yeah. as shots, yeah. and I was like, "This is like the shitty cheap spot." Once that, yeah, once the drinks start hitting South Beach prices, yeah, you know what's following. So, um, so my bad to, to go off on the Winwood stuff. No, nah, it's part of. Um, it's kind of part of what I do, man. It's, so, it's tell a little bit about your background. Obviously, you played sports. Yep. And then that took you to, we were talking about this yesterday, I didn't realize you went to where? Missouri. Yeah. The, to, no, uh, the school where Childs play. Yeah, it was in Missouri. I actually, so I played I played football, I played college football, but the route I took was high school to JUCO, and JUCO football in in, in Missouri, where the Midwest is, is competitive. So I took my talents to the Midwest, man, and uh, what Luke is talking about is Childs play, I want to say two, when Chucky's at the military school. That's Kemper Military in good old Boonville, Missouri. Are there any girls <laughs> at that school? There's, I mean, there are, but not but really. They, but they're not really. Yeah. yeah. What? Um, going from South Florida to Missouri. Yeah. What is culture shock, to say the least? There was a lot of us from Miami up there, actually. Really? Cats who, yeah, yeah, because you know, they shitty, s- shitty grades. Looking for a place to play good football, get your grades up, and move on. You'll you, you'll go find the place to go play to go play ball but um yeah culture shock just big time a lot of us well there's a few of us speaking spanish i don't speak fluent spanish i'll put that out there but i i know enough to be a little dangerous but even even the cats out there in missouri were like oh okay you guys are speaking mexican <laughs> wait what <laughs> no 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 no. <laughs> that's not that's not right it's it's spanish but yeah it's there's a little bit of a culture shock out there my my favorite racist comment i've ever heard is um, I had a Colombian friend who just he prided himself so much on like his Colombian and, and Spanish, mm-hmm. and he was in North Carolina, and some lady goes, "Oh, you speak that Mexican," oh, and so he bad. was so mad for so long, which made me laugh <laughs> so much so often, <laughs> and that used to kind of be my thing. Um, if so Javier is listening, but we used to be like, "Oh, Javi, you speak that Mexican, speak motherfucker!" That I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no. Know, um, yeah. That that's actually really funny. I, like, I haven't heard that outside of that. Outside of that, yeah. I guess people don't know what they don't know, but it's a shock to hear people say that when you come from Miami. So yeah, man, Missouri was an interesting place, to say the least. Have you been back to Missouri since? I have not been back to Missouri since. I don't. We've talked about going out there, but the school actually closed. So years ago, it closed recently. Years ago, we talked about maybe taking a road trip out there. But uh, the school shut down. It was an old, haunted military school. Is that why they chose it for child's play? I think that had a lot to do with it. That's wild that they were able to recruit. Yeah. Being Chucky's actually one of the few movies that really scared the shit out of me. Yeah, back then it did. I, like, it really terrified me. Didn't they recreate a new Chucky, a new child's play? I don't know. I feel like I'm older now where I'll just find it dumb. But, yeah, it's, like, it's real dumb. as a kid, it was it was pretty terrifying. Yeah. That and Pet Cemetery. I feel I've like never seen Pet Cemetery. I was Pet Cemetery. Yeah, that was that was some freaky shit. What is the concept of pet cemetery? Pet cemetery is a cemetery where dead animals are buried and they come back to life, and not so nice when they come back to life. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So let's. 
if if you so I have an office now in Kansas City. Actually, server is going to be running that. Right, he was talking He's about be it. Helping so that's that. your office. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I got four offices now, which is fucking nuts. Kansas City. I got Kansas City. I got Miami, South Carolina. I got Lawrenceville, and I got Greenville. Good for you, man. Proud of you. Thank you, thank you. So when Drew used to work with me, um, with the, the come up is crazy. The come up is crazy. I, I remember specifically going walking into your apartment, you sitting on your couch. And you're on your laptop. I think you just started US Health. And you were just going through, you were just making calls. And you were like, yeah, man, this is, I think this is, I could do something with this. This is pretty cool. So, kind of a, a cool backstory on that is what Drew's talking about is when I first started, I was like basically working from home and the office. Um, for anybody that is struggling with what they're doing, maybe you can take some inspiration from this. I was the worst person in my office for my first three months. I didn't mm. get paid, like, a, like basically anything. Um, cause it's a, it's a commission only position. Mm -hmm. So I was doing side hustles. I was asking Ramez for money. Wow. That's um, right. You were. Ramez hooked me up, man. Um, so he gave me a little bit of money to keep me afloat. Um, my ex had to kind of like help me a little bit, but I was watching these people do really well. And I just kept telling myself, I don't know sales yet, but these people aren't smarter than me. And if they are only marginally, like these people aren't, they can't talk better than I can. And mm -hmm. if they do only marginally. Although I probably said that wrong, so it's kind of ironic. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. No, um, you're good. But my thing was like, so, and this is actually how me and Danielle met. I don't know if she told you. So, Oh, yeah, she actually, this morning, she told me 2016 that you yeah, guys yeah. met. So, so anyway, so when I started at, um, at Garrett's first office, um, I was part of the moving company that moved him in. I got changed in the bathroom. Didn't know that shit. Sat down and started making calls. I'm not going to put the dude's name out there, like, I didn't mean it like a dick, but he kind of made a comment like, oh, you're going to fucking do this and, you know, like, come on, dude, let it go. You're a mover. Wow. Um, anyway, so long story short, I was literally the worst. I would go downstairs at lunch every single day um, or just in the middle of the day when I was just like stressed from getting my face kicked in on the phones all day. <laughs> literally. And I would go and grab a coffee and I'd read sales books. And Danielle approached me and goes, yeah, this is literally how we met. So I, and you know, I'll tie in that, that first day story we were just telling you. Uh, I'll tie it in in a second. But she comes up to me. Remember how we're saying, like, when we first met, I had a girlfriend, so we didn't talk. Mm -hmm. um, she was like, hey, you can't be from South Florida. Nobody here reads. And I was like, I started <laughs> laughing, and I was like, you're right, I'm not. <laughs> and you're right, nobody does read here. Like, it's impossible. Anybody that hasn't been to South Florida, like, it's impossible to find a bookstore. It's so hard. There's, one, there's books and books in South Beach. There's a Barnes and Nobles in Fort Lauderdale. I was going to say, there's Barnes and Noble. I can't think in of it. In Fort Lauderdale, else. there's nothing in between that 45-minute drive or hour and a half drive. Damn. That's crazy, bro. Next business venture, maybe? I mean, they're not there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if the bookstore is going to kill it in South Florida. Um, but anyway, so like I, I was doing that, and then I originally was telling myself, I'm going to get really good to prove I can do it, and then I'm going to quit and do something else. Hmm. Um, and then I got really, really good. I actually became like the top agent. I won a suit in um, December, which is the busiest month, which was two months after this, for like being the top agent. And then I loved it and never quit. Never looked back. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, big and where, strides. And where that ties in with Danielle is um, I gave her like, I would teach her, like when I got good, I would see her down there and I gave her like sales advice. We just never went anywhere with it because right. I had a girlfriend. You had a girl and, at the time. Like, she respected that. You yeah, and, and I respected it. Like yeah. I was... That was a, I don't want to say toxic relationship. But it was mm. a learning relationship, and and I'm not. It wasn't the girl's fault necessarily. We were both. I like the way you put that. It's 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 a learning experience because I was I was fucking up. She was fucking up. Not right. not in the traditional ways necessarily, but like. Fuck it, it was, up. yeah. But it, but it was almost like I needed to pay that karma, and, and she needed to whatever she needed me for. Like we we definitely served each other's purposes. Right. Um. Anyways, fast forward for four years, um, business is booming. I, I was living on the floor of my office after living with Oaken, and then I was living with Jeremy. I get nominated for this big promotion, so I go down to South Florida. Christian Cologne staying in my uh, my apartment in Fort Lauderdale. I like the dope apartment. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. But because I was paying for everything on the expansion of the office, I couldn't afford a place here. I remember that. So, like, I was just basically crashing on couches and staying with people. <laughs> Meanwhile, wow. like, killing it in business, yeah, making yeah, absurd yeah. money. But I'm putting everything back into the business and my friends who were struggling. So, like, I'm paying for everybody else, and I'm living below. I still drive a 2013 Toyota Corolla. 
God damn it. You know, like I put all my shit back into other people and growth. And, and now with the stuff that's happening and mm-hmm. the stuff we're talking about, it's by far it's, it's paying possible. off. Yeah. Knock on wood. Thank you, God. Um, so anyway, so I, I get nominated for this promotion. I was like, yo, I'm going to go down to South Florida, um, get my stuff from the apartment and, and get set up. So like clearly Georgia is going to be the home base. Um, so I go down there and I don't put anything on social media because I, you know what I mean, I don't really put the stuff I'm doing on social media, at least when I'm doing it, maybe like a month later. Um, just a weird view of mine that like putting it out there before it's finished, you're going to attract too much negative energy. Oh yeah. And it's going to stop it from finishing. And also putting it out there for others before you finish, you're not going to focus on the task at hand. You're going to focus on what the others uh, think. Absolutely. It's only natural. It's yeah. It's just human yeah, nature. Protect so, your dreams. So I'm just more like, it's like in Gladiator when Rome was just a whisper, you couldn't even like say it out loud. Uh-huh. Um, that, that's how I view when I do things. <laughs> so I don't put anything online, but Danielle reaches out to me. He's like, hey, I just moved back from Singapore. You know, are you around? Are you single? And I was like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah, um, yeah timing is a bitch, huh? But I'm also a big believer in like follow the breadcrumbs and, and these things always happen for me. because I think because I follow the signs, which for those of you that don't know, the word miracle is ancient Hebrew um, for following the signs to victory. The hmm. word miracle that we use now is um, obviously an anglicized word, which came about after the time of Christ, in or, and it now implies Jesus type things. Right. But before Jesus, originally it didn't have. But that before Jesus, of, it couldn't have had that connotation. Right, correct, the actual correct. connotation was reading of signs or the stars. Wow. Of of victory. So that's not when we're doing the mushrooms. I'm like, yo, it's a constellation. This is about to happen. Uh-huh. Think about it. The wise men in the Bible they followed the constellation that they found, or the stars that they found mm-hmm. to find right and like. It's funny because nowadays, you know, traditional Christians be like, oh, that's devil worshiping astrology. And it's like, yo, literally, that's how they signify Jesus was the stars. Was the stars. The star of Bethlehem. Yeah, it's in the Bible. It, it's the start. It's the start of the yeah. Gospels. Um, anyways, so I keep kind of digressing. But <laughs> so then Danielle and I went and actually to tie it back in, we saw this like astrologer shaman guy, like not like newspaper astrologer, like deep into the stars read your palms face can show you like literally shows you oh my god it's kind of gone so i used to have different lines and he was saying one of the lines was going to go as this one grows because the connection is gone and the new one's formed no shit and he said and i've and i've actually seen and read stuff on this after because i was so blown away but with palm reading and face reading your palms and your face are connected to your brain so as your wiring on your brain changes the structure of your hand changes Wow. Not your fingerprints. This is a direct correlation to your yeah, yeah. Brain rewiring and your the so the like lines this, in your palm disappearing. I don't remember the exact part, so I could be wrong. But this might be this part of Mars, or this might be Mars. No, I think this one is um, like Venus, like loving and like arts and stuff. That's mm-hmm. oftentimes like musicians have it. You could say it's because they play it, whatever. But either way, because they're playing instruments, that part of the brain is more wired, and then therefore this becomes more wired. And then this part is like Mars, like they were saying Muhammad Ali, and like a lot of fighters have a huge part there. And this is more of like the war part. Into the sun. And it's rare, it's rare that somebody has both. And they were saying Muhammad Ali had like both. It was like he like loved life, but then he also like loved fighting. That's special. Yeah, it's, it's really, and again, like we've, because we don't understand it, because we don't give it the proper care. And nowadays, in my opinion, in Western society, somebody will do ayahuasca once and want to become, go, go become a shaman, <laughs> right? And it's like, you know, come on, yo, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. What happens if somebody goes to a dark place? You can't mm-hmm. help them. Just by going through one trip by going like through three trips it's like all right i get it yeah. it's like maybe it but you years. don't know how to handle a bar like a bad one right mm. and, and and that's why i said when we do the mushrooms i'm like yo like i'm not a shaman i'm not whatever the mushrooms facilitate this i could help you could help you've had enough experience where I've, you could guide but i but i still don't consider myself that level and i mm. also know there's levels to this shit so like there's always levels to shit so like i'm at it may be an introductory level i think more than most mm-hmm. with psilocybin and i have a great relationship with it and and I feel like God always comes on my journeys, um, probably most people's, if they're willing to invite him um, or her or whatever. But it's just, it's really interesting because the, the medicine man that, that I deal with with the ayahuasca, he literally says, he's like, yo, please, whatever you guys do, like do ayahuasca, but do it with the proper medicine man. He's like, because you have all these <laughs> basically like white people that, that come and do it <laughs> like twice. Mean? And like, I can lead you. And then if somebody goes to a spot where they need to be taken out by a medicine man, these people don't know how how. to do it. And then now they have these terrible experiences until they do it again with the proper medicine man. You know what I mean? Like, damn, sounds like I need to take a ayahuasca trip. um, I got the medicine man coming up to do a private ceremony in Georgia. 
um, which he doesn't ever do this type of shit. Uh, he has <laughs> not to put not to be too cocky, but basically, he predicted I was going to start a new. Actually, I did start a new church, but he predicted I was going to start a new church and I was going to teach people like new ways to like Boom. whatever. He wants to bring me with them to the Amazon, like yeah, introduce man. me to like the, toot the horn. Um, which is cool because it's happening now. Would so, he go to your house to do? To yeah, he's going to come to my crib. He's going to stay with me and Danielle. Well, shit, fucking that's nuts! Private. Wow. Um, he doesn't even speak English. He's going to bring his like helper. Keep me posted on that one. Bro. It's going to be uh, March twentieth to twenty fourth. Twenty um, to the twenty fourth. It'll be dramatically cheaper than it would be like going to a lot of other places, but it's still not cheap, cheap. Okay. Um, but it, it's worth it. Yeah, man. Opinion. Let's talk about that for sure. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I got a, a, another group of people too that I'm going to invite um, that I want to put out there right now especially I don't know if they want people to know but right. they're really interesting really really interesting I'm intrigued um, obviously so I, I love psychedelics um, <laughs> who doesn't well so a lot of people don't but it's coming up it, it's it's really coming up and people are understanding it better right uh, you gotta I think the people that aren't on board, there's a level on, of understanding they, they don't have. I don't even have all the level of understanding. I'm just open to learning. So uh, I'll give you an example. Um, I haven't been in a while, so I shouldn't say I go. But on occasion, I go to um, a Bible study group. Okay. I'm in Georgia. Shit's common. Good people. Um, different viewpoints than me in a lot of aspects. But similar viewpoints with me and some. But you learn. Um, <laughs> but I remember maybe like my second one. Like, oh, what'd you do this weekend? And I was like, you guys don't want to know. <laughs> and they're like, no, what'd you do this weekend? And I was like, well, um, did ayahuasca with a medicine man, da 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 And then they were talking to me about, like, mushrooms and, and ayahuasca. And they were like, you need to be careful. You know, oh. uh, we've heard about people getting a demon. And I was oh, like, boy. And so then I literally told them, I was like, I mean, that could happen. But let's be honest. Did the plant bring the demon or did it show you it? Mm. Some people say, like, they have bad luck and all these things happen. And it's like, yo, mm. maybe they got some shit they got to deal with. That's a good point. And if you do it with the proper team. Then you, you can grow. You can confront but like, it. But like, grow. you guys are ones that like we don't run from our problems. It sounds like it you do. It sounds like you do just now. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Like, you guys believe in spirits as we're reading Bibles, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like maybe there's some shit to learn, and it's a natural plant. Um, this year, I'm giving up booze. I told you, I, I gave up alcohol. I'm giving up basically anything that's mind altering that's manufactured. Okay. Um, not plants, not marijuana, not mushrooms, not ayahuasca, anything that's from natural the from the earth to me is a connection to God. If done properly with the right guidance, with the right mindset, with the right intentions. Right. See, the other thing too that I learned, I got my ass beat by ayahuasca um, on one of the nights, you know, and it was a beautiful lesson for me, but it was like, there's levels to this and there's proper, even it was literally like, Luke, even if you're right about everything, if you don't go about it the right way, mm don't count or like it, it you'll still lose basically right so it's like you got to respect certain lines and like certain mm-hmm. things and there's certain things you just won't never understand um but I, I just genuinely believe that like if if or when people become more open to plant medicines as they're called or the sacred plants they'll, they'll grow so much and i think I, I i brought it up yesterday before we do it I've been doing a ton of research. There's one from the American Health Association. Um, and for anyone that's listening for me, because I'm probably going to say it wrong, but it's like an fMRI or something like that. It's a brain scan. And they did it with, um, they did one study with acetyl, um and anti-anxiety. Okay. And oh, did, yeah, yeah. You were telling me this last time. And they did a, ther- a therapy session. Mm-hmm. And then they did one with a psilocybin in a therapy session. And then what happens, the way your brain works is it's like, for everybody if you can picture the brain it's like physical like there's there's really like pathways yeah yeah and what happens is when you get in thir- certain thought patterns especially debilitating thought patterns oftentimes you repeat it so you, it's almost like you walk a path in the woods and yeah. you and you, you create, create a path yeah correct correct right that's Whereas, how the brain is, is wired as well yeah that's exactly how the brain's wired right holy shit so everything is metaphor right like the same we build everything based off we don't realize it off subconscious symbolism so like so we create these paths, right? What mushrooms do is they basically bring a bulldo- bulldozer mm. or start a fire, forest fire, and then they allow you to create a new path. Shit. If you do it with the right team, right. they've literally shown studies, physiologically speaking, they did a test. You know, after the, the therapy session with the, the anti-anxiety, there was no difference physiologically. There was some short-term cognitive benefits. 
But short term, very short term, they had to constantly redo it. And they had to keep taking these anti-anxieties, which actually were numbing them. Yeah, and, and they're not they're just not good overall for your body. And then they did a six month later test with the psilocybin, and the new happier pathways were still solid, and the other pathways were more covered over. Shit, which is not, but it's true though. Like, yeah, yeah it's nuts. Anybody that's done it understands. Anybody that's <laughs> done it and not known the proper way to do it, unfortunately, probably understands yep. too. So that's why it's important to do it with people that can guide you and again i think mushrooms at least the ayahuasca and most men and them will tell you they're, they call them like little brother it's like it's like a child's play they call it like child's medicine okay i think mushrooms are a much easier gateway yeah to iowa to ayahuasca ayahuasca you do with the proper medicine man you know, ayahuasca is no fucking joke that's not that mushrooms are but how I does ayahuasca it. compare to dmt is it totally different or is it similar so for me it, it was very different for me i compared it similar to a much more powerful mushroom for me dmt is like what movies show right like dmt like on mushrooms like in movies they're like oh you're flying around with fucking bigfoot or whatever right <laughs> dmt is similar to that except for there's much more of a purpose than the way in the movie show right you're not just flying around with bigfoot yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. flying around like getting messages right that are like flying around like through like a vortex yeah, um or in like a uh, yeah, yeah it's it's hard. if nobody's in dmt it's hard to explain um but you could google dmt waiting room it's like a common thing everybody gets to or not everybody but a lot of people get to i've been there many many times that's what it looks like um, I'm, I'm gonna google that shit right it's wild yeah, yeah it's it, it's trippy uh, I, I, you you might have been there in the past i've been there many times um ayahuasca is not necessarily visions it's messages and and it really comes when you purge so say the purge is the best part so like when you throw up like once you throw up it's like strap in it's coming mm -hmm. but what'll happen is you're getting all these things da 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 and maybe something will come to you right right and then like if that's what the message is going to be about all of a sudden bleh, just uh -oh. like that there's there's no avoiding throwing up with ayahuasca there you're is just, but you probably don't get a message then you're fighting it you're not just letting it do its thing you're, you're not it says you're not basically not ready like ayahuasca like chooses like what it's gonna it's gotcha. very different so the way the ayahuasca ceremonies go, um, at least the way that they go in the Amazon, and I have like the Amazonian That's medicine what I imagine. is you have a huge circle, very, very, very sacred and ceremonial. Um, the fire, again, represents God, grandfather spirit. Mm -hmm. um, they have everybody sit down quietly with your intention. You, so like you have, and you have three cups a night. So each cup will give you a different message. Okay. And then they'll call you up. The Taita will call you up. It's like the medicine man. Um, he'll call you up. And, and there's this lady, Magical Monica, what up? Uh, she's like his, like, translate. She's, she's amazing. Magical Monica? Yeah, that's what I call her, Magical Monica. That's what's up. Um, so they'll call you up and they'll be like, you know, come and have your cup. And you have your cup. They're like, yo, ha Grandma likes it better when you greet her with a smile. Like, try to do it with a smile. Yeah, but yeah. it tastes uh, terrible. It's, it's, it's awful, huh? Yo, it's boiled bark and oh, root Jesus. that's burned fermented for like years no. or months or whatever it's like this crazy process to make and, and it takes so much of it. it the whole fact that they even found it or created it to me is just divine right and it's like god want because there's no reason or they, they don't they don't know how it found but, right. it's, but it's literally the religion of the amazon okay and and when you do it, you're like oh this is god okay cool um so for me my first night was just super empowering and it was like I guess I can, it's kind of weird saying it, but it was like, I was aligned with Christ consciousness and like all these other things. And I was going to like help people and like all these different things. Right. And most people around me are literally going through hell. So like I'm getting these most beautiful messages and a lot of people around me are like crying, like crying, breaking shit, <laughs> like just era. going nuts. But like, you're supposed to sit there in silence and basically all of a sudden like you hear some people crying and some people like, so my wow. boy that I, that brought me with him to it, it was like digging his hands in the dirt and crying, and he met his He's dead nephew. Damn. Um, I had a friend that made peace with, they were sexually, sexually molested as a child. Like, yeah, it brings you to a dark place that you haven't, you haven't and, maybe encountered or dealt with. Dealt with. And, it, and it has you re-experience, it, it just, it does different things. Danielle was like, she met her future children. Um, she was like from Atlantis, which is wild because I was talking to the stars and they were telling me like, I was chosen, I don't know, it, it's weird. Like I don't, but it was basically like to, guide and help her and protect her and like we have all these things we're going to help people with and then the next night so like basically all my cups in the first night were just beautiful and empowering 
The next night, same thing. And then I don't know the protocol and I spit in the fire cause I'm like <laughs> high on myself. I'm like too big up and I like put something in the fire and like Matt Monica was like, yo Luke, you don't fucked up now, Luke. Don't do that. You, this is going to take a turn. And all of a sudden, just, just, like, uh, you felt it immediately. Then I did it another time with one of my friends who's this very powerful person um, that I can, I told about my experience and like I told her about my bad experience and she like had all these things that she wanted to do. And um, she's actually been sober since her relationship with her family's incredible sense. Nice. She, I've never seen anything like it. We did three cups, three nights in a row of the strongest type of ayahuasca. She went through hell every single cup. Damn. And, and I'm having like the, Time fucking your life. greatest experience Danielle's going through like how most people go through these hard hard ones I don't know if it's because I'm constantly checking my ego and constantly doing mushrooms and constantly like alright Luke get your shit together yeah, alright Luke you can do better this you can be nicer to people here you can do this 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 I, I don't know so you're saying you were just better prepared going in no I'm not I'm just saying I was fortunate I don't know I don't want to presume anything better I just I literally am climbing a waterfall like this, this person Just is, think about that. this person has like seven waterfalls in their backyard. Right. And we're doing it in their backyard and I connect them with my medicine man. And she uh, gave them a very nice and then brought them out. And again, they don't do it for the money at all. Like, yo, this dude, they're, they're, they put all their money back into the church of ayahuasca and everything into the people. Like, like literally, like if you saw how low they live, not, that's not the right way to put it either. How humbly they Humble. live. Humble. Gotcha. And just good people that like really believe that this is the medicine for the world. So their intention is is, is, is pure. Oh my so god, the experience bro. Yo, it's, for some it's yeah, yeah. So it's like, such. so this dude, like the medicine man's like singing songs to me and like like crazy stuff. I'm climbing and I'm like literally like, ah, you know, like <laughs> top of the world. It's coming and and like to them, whatever ayahuasca says is truth, right? Say and that again. Whatever ayahuasca says is truth. Okay, there's no questioning it. It's like. Mm. So I'm getting these beautiful things, and the medicine man's getting it too with me, and he, it, which again, it's just douchey for me to say, but like it's true, so I'm not gonna say it's not. Like, mm -hmm. but he's like, yo, I gotta bring you with me to the, my Amazon, like all these things, and you're gonna da da da. Meanwhile, Danielle and this poor lady are like just fucking She's going through it, going through it, <laughs> and I'm climbing waterfalls. Like, thank you, thank you, God, me. thank you, yeah. God. Like, you know, like, um, so it, it's. I strongly suggest everybody does it, but with the right, but you guide. do it with the right people. So yeah, like there's the a right really group. common one that I heard is beautiful called Rhythmia. That's in Costa Rica or Peru. That just sounds beautiful. But it's like a very like fancy resort um, type. And it's like where like the celebrities do it, like Aaron Rodgers and, and all those guys. And again, I, I have nothing else. I've never been there. I just like my medicine, man, because it was clear like his was the purpose of getting the medicine to the people. Mm hmm. And it wasn't commercialized. It Cause like. I'm like, yo, like, dude, I'm going to connect you with these people. Like I'm, I'm like, yo, like I know these people, bah, 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 bah. I'm going to connect you with all them. And he was like, do they need the medicine? Everybody needs medicine. And he was just like, okay, whatever. Mm. Like I just gotta get the medicine to the people. That's my mission. And I was like, all right, man, like, I don't think you understand. Like you get these people to do it and believe in it. They might be able to like pull some strings behind doors that need strings pulled. Right. To allow you to right. operate easier. So that's like one of my missions I want to do. Um, he's not really interested in going that route? No, no, he's 100% he interested. He's all about it. No, dude, he, he loves it. He's like, okay. all right, Luke, whatever. You need. Do what you got to do. He's like, you know, the stars align. So, yo, the night that I'm doing it, there's literally shooting stars. No shit. And, like, it's like all these messages, and the, all my messages are aligning with shooting stars. Hmm. So, like, we were talking about last night with, like, the stars and stuff. Right. And he's seeing the same thing, and he, like, he sees a shooting star, and he literally kind of stops him. He was like, yo, somebody had a message? And, and I was like, yeah. And like then another boom, 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 and I was just like, okay, this is this is what's supposed to be, and it's not just me, right? It's the group consciousness and all that, right? But yeah, he's I'm, he's he's my guy. He's <laughs> your guy. And again, like what's cool is is I'm humble enough. I know, like I'm not on his level. I, you know, I host mushroom ceremonies with friends and like have fun, and we sit by the fire and we figure it out, which is necessary. It's awesome. It's child's play, as they call it. But he's like, yo, you're like a rambunctious good teenager. Like it's good for you to do child's play. And I was Absolutely. like, cool, you guys handle the heavy duty shit that I'm not prepared for. Right. <laughs> like, yo, I can't, uh, somebody goes to fucking hell. I don't know how to bring their soul back. That's a lot of pressure on somebody to bring someone back from hell in a dark place. But yo, they, I've watched it happen and they do it so beautifully. And then these people process these things that are, that they need to process. 
again, and there's, and I get why somebody would want to like administer it. Cause it's like, this is the most beautiful experience. It helped me so much. It's like, cool, but you don't know how to help somebody in that same place. Like there's a whole pro there's like this tobacco thing and the, the way they do it in that triangle we got, they have one in that. Like, oh it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very beautiful thing. The sounds just added to the whole experience last night. The sounds. So something, um, I bought a bunch of books on it that I'm going to really start studying is called cymatics. And it's a study of like sound. Um, you probably you've definitely seen stuff on Instagram and like so and YouTube and stuff. Um, so you ever see like where there's like rice on something in the frequency, and it creates like sacred geometry just from the frequency? I'll probably see it now that I get on social media. Yeah, yeah it's dope. It's called so you just YouTube. It's cymatics, um, but it's like how the frequencies, when done properly, will create beautiful structures through like water, mm. salt, like different things, which is what our body's made of. True. And when you think about like the modern music industry. It's like weaponized, right? The frequencies distort and chaos and stuff like that. Yep, um, yep, yep, yep. So one of the things we're really doing with our church is our mission statement. I don't remember exactly how it works, but it's like we believe in the divinity within you. We love and appreciate the divinity that created, and we, we do our best to help people access it through sacred plants, food, and sound. Yeah. So our, All the senses what we really want to do is get like the regenerative farmers eventually with the land have our own chickens with like eggs and organic natural foods that we're going to cook in the soups the sacred plants and then the sounds and then the integration after and we believe that like all that with the community is what we're called to do so yeah, i love it though one time with danielle uh, i should tell you this too like 2021 she's come visiting 2020 maybe She's visiting. I do my nightly prayer. Like, hey, God, show me how me and Danielle can be of most service to, like, the world. And literally, like, I don't normally get an answer this quick. Um, and a just vivid image of a mushroom pops out of my mind. And I was like, okay, cool. Hmm. That's what I was hoping it would be. That's <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if I have a favorite thing, it's mushrooms. Love, um, love the shrooms. I, I do. And, and they're physiologically good for you. It, again, my neck is better my wow. from a football injury my it and there's all these studies like it's not even just like oh anecdotal evidence it's literally like evidence and i've told many of these influential big people who don't do it and, and i've given them my experience and and i told them like different things to research and what's really cool is they've all done the research and a couple of them are like hey man i want to do mushrooms now um i feel like i've been lied to my whole life yeah, man. which is really cool because because you have and my view is if I'm a ph pharmaceutical company or I'm a big food company or I'm whatever, I don't want people to be able to no, heal themselves. There's for no like, money in that for them. Mushrooms are so cheap. It's like yeah. there's no no money in the cure with anything. Like ten bucks wow. is like a healing for like six months to a year. Yep. You have to spend ten bucks every six months. No, now, obviously residual. Yeah, like yeah. Medicine is like every month you got to keep putting every it into month, that pot. And, and it doesn't actually fix anything. It right. just just numbs the yeah, yeah a little, it numbs a little the pain. Day, a little numb. I mean, think think of what like these pain medicines and these anti-anxieties it's not fixing anxiety it's numbing it yeah to think that there's Sounds not like a band-aid to think that there's not a long-term or side effect from numbing mm. the anxiety or the pain is there for a reason right ignoring it is not the answer ignoring right you're not fixing it you're just numbing it to tie it back in it's like i don't know if my problems it's like you use an anti-anxiety it sounds like you do like i try to get to the root of my fucking anxiety okay cool what am i not addressing what am i worrying too much about you know, like anxiety, I believe I heard is like worry about the future. Depression is too focused on the past. Makes sense. Right. Like you get anxiety about like what's to come. Oh God, like yep, I got to yep, get yep. money. I got da da da. Whereas if you just walk in faith and you follow your signs, like Tavia says, shout out Tavia. Shout um, out Tavia. Cool, cool ass chick. Um, she's such a writer, uh, but does it make sense how much sense it makes? I like that. Doesn't make sense how, how much, much sense, sense it, it makes. makes. Like don't, you, just don't, don't, don't analyze it. It just, it's, it's like, hey, is. I get that this doesn't make sense right now. These are the signs. Your intuition and your soul tell you it's right. Just follow it with good intentions and figure it out as you go, and we'll give you another bird come. And I believe that that's, we were talking about it yesterday, but I believe that's what Jesus and the text talk about when they say the word of God is bread, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's Jesus all the time because he's the one I'm most familiar with. But the same thing. It's like like the Old Testament, New Testament, Hindu. It's always like following signs god's word every sacred text i know of starts with sound they say jesus is god's word the living word the logos that's fucking crazy right like when you think about it, it's like what does that mean 
I don't know, but it means like a sound or frequency. Like Jesus is a vibe, is frequency. Jesus um, is a vibe. <laughs> for sure. Make a shirt. Jesus, Jesus is, is a vibe. vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool cats. Ur- urban Absolutely. urban hip tees. <laughs> Jesus is a vibe. Um, it, I mean, and that's where me and the Bible study groups get along. It's because I have that love for Jesus. I just don't have the love for the church. Right. Because right, my view right, is like, right. I go by the Bible verse where Jesus is like, where two or more of you are gathered in my name, there I will be. So you don't need a fucking building. I don't need somebody to read the words for me. Let me read it. Let me read it. Correct. Like it, the whole point of Jesus was he was coming back, teaching the religious elite, the Pharisees, that they were fucking hypocrites and that they were missing the point and over being over rigid with the rules. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, oh, so you guys won't work on um, the Sabbath. So if one of your lambs fell into a, into a crit, like you want to get it out? Interesting. Okay, so you let it die because because you don't work on the Sabbath. Come on. Come on now. Yeah, and he's like, you know, like so you say all these things, but then you don't do the first part, like which is being good to your neighbor. Right, right, right. So, so he challenged the strictness yeah. of of the word, like not working on the Sabbath. That's interesting. Um, I went I, to Catholic school twelve years, and it's a shame. I, I didn't. Not a shame. It is what it is. What I, I strongly suggest to everybody is just read the Gospels. So. I'm not a huge fan. I appreciate it, but I'm not a huge fan of all of the Bible. But the Gospels are the four stories of those that walked with Jesus. So to me, if there's one part to go to, it's the Gospels. And then what I do, because there's been so many different mistranslations and translations. So originally, it was spoken in Aramaic, written in Greek, which is a really weird translation. So Aramaic is a completely, um, what's it? what's the term? It's like, it's a language where every single thing is made to be figured out. Like, like words don't have one meaning, which is hard to think about when in English we're like, a word is a word, right? Yep, yep. Aramaic is all context. It's a contextual language. Who speaks Aramaic? Um, Jesus would have. So that's like, it's not around anymore, but it was like the language spoken in that area at the time. Interesting. Um, right. So that's why Jesus speaks in parables too, I believe. Um, and then it was written, the New Testament is written in Greek, which is the most literal of all languages. Oh. Like there's seven different words for the word love. There's, hmm. um, so it's like love your neighbor. I believe that one is the brotherly love. Then there's like eros, which is like romantic love. Then there's, there's seven of them, right? So Greek is so, it's, it's the culture of like logic and structure. So it makes sense, right? Right, right. But it's like you took Aramaic and you put it in Greek. And it's like, that's a weird, it's, a weird it's, 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 it's gotta be hard to do the translation. But then when they do the translations, then we retranslate it to English, which is also very literal, but very different language. It was like love. There's only one word for love. People love chicken. They love their friends. They love <laughs> true. Right. Versus like in Greek, there's like this love, this love, like it's very specific. Um, so I'll give you an example. So the word meek, like the meek shall inherit mm-hmm, the earth. Mm-hmm. The word was originally written in, in Greek is the word pros. Meek is pros, P-R-A-U-S, or I don't know how to, the Greek lettering, but that would be the English translation of it. Okay. And what it means is a military war horse. Totally different meaning. What The reason why they get meek is because it's humble enough to listen to the gentlest nudge of its lord or master. But this is the part that's left out in the word meek in English, but bold enough to run through arrows and fire. Shit. Right. So to me, it's like the Michelin, like the Joe Rogans, people that are disciplined badasses, right? That's who gets the earth. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Disciplined badasses. I'm writing that one down. So, so it's, um, that's one. There's, I, I look them up all the time. I have a bunch written in my phone. What me and Danielle have been doing is we've been reading a verse um, from the Gospels every night before bed. And then we look up translations and stuff. That's and discipline right there. Discipline. Bad. And that's the reason why like, I'm, I'm so big on like, it's oh, there's a ton of astrology in here. We just don't call it that. Right. We're reading the stars. The sign, Herod had a sign of that there was going to be a new king that would replace him. That's astrology. That's astrology. And, and it's important enough to put into the Bible. And they believed it too, saying that this was happening. So they believe in astrology. It just wasn't called astrology back then or in the Bible. But it was, it, it but translates it, it was, but it was, it was their view was like, if it's this important on earth, why wouldn't the stars signify it? Which when you think about it, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? If we're this important 
and stars are constantly appearing and disappearing, why wouldn't something that important be written in the stars? Right? Like one of the things we would say is it was written. It was, yep. So why wouldn't it be written in the stars? Like in the, in the ancient African cultures, when a king dies, there's a new star. I don't think they just came up with that. I think they would see new stars when great kings died. And to me, that probably happened. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't it? If this guy was such a leader and all that, like, why wouldn't he have his story written in the sky? Damn. So to me, that's like where it was written. Again, we've we've trivialized, in my opinion, the sacred in the modern culture. And we have trumped up the word science in a way that we don't truly understand to discredit everything when that's not what it's for. Science is the process of learning and knowing. Hmm. And science also says it can't know everything, right? But it's like, hey, we can't prove that as easily as we want. That's discreditable. What? Like, what? And then even things that do, it's like, all right, cool. So studies show this about mushrooms. Studies show this about mushrooms. Science is this about mushrooms. Yeah, we're going to ignore that. Like, oh, okay. So what level of science are we talking about here? Right. Um, so that's my, my thing on it is, for me, I live by results. As you should. Like, all right, cool. So when I live according to these teachings, these things happen to fall into my lap. Logically, it doesn't make sense, but it happens consistently enough that I would be illogical. Right. It wouldn't make sense f- not to do it if I'm getting these kinds of results. So. Yeah, like, look look where we are. You know, I'm in a fucking my podcast. Yeah, yeah. After doing a ceremony at my church, at my house, that I was told was a gift from God by multiple people on the day it happened, didn't know I was moving in. Doesn't make sense, but I'm going to damn sure keep doing it. Yeah. Following the breadcrumbs. It doesn't make sense how much sense it makes. Back to that. Shout out Tavia. And shout out Tavia. Right? So, like, my view, and again, we were talking about the business, is, like, I had one of those intuitions, and it was like, oh, shit, I think I'm going to be able to help Drew take this to the next level. And again, like, uh, only if if I do, then, like, cool, we'll be business partners. Yep, yep. And if not, cool, whatever. Like, Yeah, yeah. If no not harm, cool. no foul. Correct, like, correct. But, um, Love it, man. And, and that's kind of my view is, like, I have all these different things where, to me, opulence is independence or, or true riches is wealth is independence. And my whole thing is turning waste into profit. All right, if this is costing me money and I don't have to spend money and I can monetize it some other way or not, or just not lose money on it. Cool. I'm going to do that. And, and that's my, my focus this year. And all these new businesses are like kind of coming to me and it's, and, and it's, it's not costing me anything more. It'll continue. Yeah, yeah. It, it just keeps... And it's only fucking January. Yep, yep. And I, my goal was like this the year, and it was like, oh, in January, this shit is happening. It was important this shit to hit 2023 with momentum. It was not about... For me, it wasn't about what's my New Year's resolution or... It was just continuing. Just continuing and riding the momentum wave into January. That's That was my goal. And here I am, riding the momentum wave. Hitting free game on, you know, dope podcasts. You know, just had a great night doing mushrooms. It's and and now we're talking about different ways to monetize things, correct? Too, yep, which yeah, which yeah, we'll we keep off the air topics. for now until it actually happens exactly. again. Because I don't like to put it out until it happens. Back to that, protect your dreams. Um, and the whole thing is bring bring the people with you. Yep, and yep. and it's like we we're talking about before. It's like you know, if you have an opportunity for a favor or money, you got to choose. Did you see this is the long term or not? And if you do, oftentimes a favor will be more beneficial. And if not, Correct. just get the money. It's, either way, it's cool. Either way, it's win. Yeah, yeah. And it's not against either route. Okay, cool. Um, so it's... But that's 2023 right now, man. And I just feel like we are on the cusp of, again, the Constellation, the rocket ship. Yep. Or what I like, if not a rocket ship, a locomotive. I like that one. Um, but a vehicle... I like locomotive because the electromagnetism, I think I got to learn more about it. I used to have this vision where I was going to help start green trainways throughout America hmm. because the amount of energy it takes once it gets moving is basically nothing because it, it's electromagnetism. So like it's getting it moving um, and then pulling it with the magnetism and then like sending it back and forth. Very interesting. Um, the but yes yeah, so like the trains uh, i think are a huge thing that we underutilize here 
Um, we need a train system in Miami. We need one in Atlanta. We need one everywhere. For sure. Um, especially like trying to replace cars and all these other things. I don't think green or electric cars that use lithium batteries that take all that energy and waste and hurt the earth to create are the answer. Probably not. Also, I don't like the fact on an electric car that if something happened and the government thinks you're guilty of something, oh, theoretically yeah. they could just turn your shit off. Basically. Right? Yeah, that's some scary shit to think That's about. scary. They could, they could like lock you in the car and just turn it off. Yeah. And you might be innocent. I don't like that idea. I'm not opposed to electric cars, but I my brain just goes so far into the future every time that I'm like, well, that's a weird scenario that I don't really trust. Right. I'm not saying, I'm so thankful to be in America. Like, we can talk, we can do these things. I, I don't have a realistic fear of a bunch of fucking invaders coming in and kicking your front door down, taking everything away. Right. Not saying that that can't happen, but I don't. That's right. Not, not saying it can't happen, but we don't live in fear that it's not a reality at this point. Yeah. So, but I still don't necessarily trust everything, especially with the COVID and that the was way they handled wild times. Dude, and all these things are coming out now, like the um, the VARES, the vaccine adverse reporting system, showing all of these myocardias and like a dramatic increase in numbers, and that's just what's reported. Uh, cardi sudden cardiac arrest. Is what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah, that's just, that's just what's being reported. And that's just what's being reported and accepted yeah, as it. Accepted. And it versus when COVID was happening, if somebody died with COVID, it was signified as a COVID death. We don't do that with vaccines. And we still have this much numbers. Can't, you can't pick and choose. Right. That's what I'm saying. With the science. Trust the science. Yeah, it's like, yeah. yo, it's like you're being selective on how you use it. Being selective now. <coughs> oh, no. We have to prove it. Well, you didn't have. Yo, George Floyd was originally uh, put down as a COVID death. Did you know that? That's fucking wild. Yeah, I do. I do know that, actually. Like, if you're in a car accident and you had COVID, that shit was If they found it like, in your system, they would classify it as a COVID death. Which is the reason why the numbers were so exaggerated. You gotta think about why would they do that? What other reason to boost the numbers? Like what else? What, what else? And my view that? is uh, control. So I I read the Great Reset, um, 2009, COVID 19, the Great Reset by Klaus Schwab, who's the head of the World Economic Forum. He like actually has a book called that. Mm -hmm. um, and in most of it is, in my opinion, portrayed that they're trying to do the right thing, but there's an underlining theme that we need to be able to control the people. And if another pandemic happened, we should be able to do that. So my thing is, and that's, I'm not exact. That's literally a fucking <coughs> from the guy, right. <laughs> Klaus Schwab. Like you can, you can guys, you can order that book. You can look it up. It's like the world economic, it's the great reset COVID-19 by Klaus Schwab. Wow. Who's the head of the world economic forum. That's weird. The great reset. Yeah, that's weird. Um, <laughs> that's not very weird times that's not a nothing thing right especially with the way it was handled so i obviously have my views on it but i also believe strongly every verse is a great and equal opposite opportunity so like those that don't succumb to the fear and allow themselves to be controlled i think as long as they don't go about adversarially or necessarily picking fights mm -hmm. with people that don't need to I think we'll have such a dramatic come up, right? And there's a forest fire. The seeds that were planted properly will come up and be the top trees the next time. Hmm. And I feel like that's our, our group. That's free game. I've right been there. felt that's free game. Yeah. That's been my belief on it. So while other people are, are whatever, my team's going to be sprouting. Right. And, and that's what I genuinely believe. Um, again, like I'm not trying to start smoke. I'm trying to like, fight with nobody it's like alright cool that's what you're doing let me and my people do my thing Correct. we're not fucking Correct. with you don't fuck with we're us we're not fucking with you we're just gonna do our thing yeah, we're yeah. not gonna subscribe to a lot of the bullshit yeah and those that want to okay cool like again people that want to I'm not mad at you just don't yell at me right, <laughs> right, right but people right. used to give me so much shit and then now that like the studies and CDC is openly saying now these things there's no apologies no nothing nope it's like yo nope 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 nope. There, no, there's no, not no. even not acknowledging that they could have been wrong but that's that's human nature too. I forget what it's called. Oftentimes in groups where like they predict the end of the world or things like that, when the end of the world doesn't happen, they double down and they're like, Well, it's because we prayed so hard. There was an end of the world in alternate reality. Oh, and man. it's like, all right, man. No humbleness. Like just we fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Or we whatever. were wrong. Yeah, or we were wrong. Right. It's okay. Like, you know what I mean? That'd be like, Okay, cool, I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We nobody knew what was going on. Just brush it under the rug. Yeah, man. Wild Times 2020.
I had people rethink a lot. Like I go back to having to work from home. It just frees up time. You don't have that commute time anymore. You don't have that just mental time that you need to decompress after a long days of work. So it, I think it allowed for more creativity for a lot of people, myself included, to uh, just just follow your dreams or yeah, just put a plan into into really following through. Like time, time is the most valuable asset we don't get back. So the ability to have that time from working from home, there was a lot of us that did. You either took advantage or you or you, or you just whatever. You just kept dreaming and didn't put it into practice. I remember when COVID first happened, there was like a common thing on social media and it was like, if at the end of 2020, you haven't learned a new skill or started a new business, you're just lazy. And then nobody did and nobody fucking says that anymore. No. Well, no, COVID happened. I wasn't able to. But I remember all 2020, all these people putting that shit up. I remember that. I remember that too. And all those same fucking people didn't do dick. It goes back to the same thing. It's like, I'm I'm gonna do my own thing, but I'm not knocking you if you don't. Like yeah. maybe you're just chilling. Maybe you're you're cool with your nine to five, and that's fine too. And you're happy, then. But just don't don't bitch about your situation of wanting more if you didn't go after it. Right. Yeah. And and st- still, there's just more distractions now. The beautiful thing about COVID is, if you were focused, there was less distractions. If you were focused, there was less distractions. Business, all that shit really took off mm-hmm. for me. So mm-hmm. it was it was a pretty cool thing. Um. Yeah, man. And and I and again, I, I really believe that conversations like this, again, I believe that this was called for by God. Um, I don't know like what will happen with it and of it, and and I keep being told it's like not time for it to be big yet. Um, but these conversations, like Joe Rogan, like I give Joe Rogan more credit than anybody because I think that he opened the door for open conversations. Mm-hmm. And people expressing different views yeah. and not overreacting, just like hearing them out, like, okay, cool, man. I yeah. don't fucking get yeah. it, but it's like, hear me out. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain it to me? Um, plus, what he did for psychedelics, I think, has made it way less taboo. Yeah, man. It's a way it's packaged, too. I think you, you said something as simple as plant medicine is a good way to package it. I mean, yeah. psychedelics have been demonized along with weed, but it's the packaging, it's how it's presented to the general public. Right. If you call it a drug, it's terrible. Plant Correct. medicine? Correct. Hmm, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Because everybody wants medicine. Everybody wants to be healed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the way it should be looked at. But there's, again, it, it comes down to economics. There's no money in the cure. There's no money in, like you said, six months, a six month study on psilocybin shows that it's. There could be money in the cure. There would just have to be people with money backing it. And they would have to not be ashamed or afraid to say it. So mm-hmm. in my elite mastermind group, um, there is this prominent lady that set a bunch of like physical records like iron man records or, or tough mutter records or something I'm like that i was impressed with that kind like of middle-aged shit. white lady lives in like washington and i'm obviously very open about mushrooms and plant medicines so on the bus on the way back from one of the events she's talking to me she's like hey i heard you talking about medicine like um plant and mushrooms i'm really happy you're open about that my ex she literally was like my ex who was like a terrible mean person <laughs> The only time he was good was he used to microdose and I grow mushrooms for him now. But because of his business position and his conservative, like, whatever, he demonizes it and talks a ton of shit about it. But he knows it's the only thing that helps him. So he just secretly does it. Do you know how many people there probably are like that? Tons. Especially back in, like, the 80s, 90s, 2000s. And it's like... Shit. Because of the view. Yeah. And because people are afraid to be themselves. (laughs) Correct. When meanwhile, by being yourself, you empower others. Inspire and empower all day just by being yourself. Why are people so afraid to be themselves? Where does that come from? Because if somebody doesn't like you, they don't like you for who you are. Yeah, that shit hits. Different. And it's happened to me a few times, but then usually those people come around later too. Because usually what happens is they're projecting. Usually what you don't like about somebody is something you dislike about yourself. So usually somebody might, not always, right? Because I, I do have certain dickish traits and stuff like that which some people just don't like me and i get it um so maybe i'm not the greatest example but i believe oftentimes though because because a lot of people do end up coming around and be like yo man i remember yeah. you said this a couple of years ago and i was giving you shit people come around i do that now and it, it changed my life right i can't even tell you how many times this happened again not with everybody sometimes people just don't like me and for good reason um <laughs> but i think a lot of times people project that they're not being who they wish they were so they take it out yeah it's yeah, like I agree a, with that. 
It's like a je- it's not jealousy, but it's kind of it stems from it. Oh, who's this fucking person think they are? Yeah, they can just yeah, walk yeah. around doing whatever 100%. they want, being who they want. Yeah, yeah. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, I'm they being respectful. Want, I do think that they want to be like that. Yeah, that's where that comes. That animosity comes from as well. They want to be themselves, and they want to be. They want to feel like. And the world would be better if they were. The world would be totally better if they were. And the alchemist, it's all about like following your song, mm-hmm. finding out your song, the song of the world. And everybody has their own one. And Viktor Frankl's Man Search for Meaning, true true story from a guy surviving the Holocaust, um, psychologist, his whole thing was everybody has to figure out their own purpose and go for it. Mm-hmm. And be unashamed about it. Shit and only makes sense. It only makes sense. Yeah. All right, looks like we're uh, we're getting about to that point of, of wrapping up. Time flies. Time does fly when you have this. Um, guys, please check out Urban Hip Tees. Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, uh, at Urban Hip Tees. You know, I have a full-fledged operating website as well. But um, I would definitely love for you guys to pass through the site, man. Keep it cool on there. Peace, love, cool connections is my mission. You know, the, it's feel-good apparel, easy on the eyes, smooth on the skin. Oh, there we go. All that good stuff. Um, and again, I'd like to thank Mike and Business Radio X. Oh, he's working with us. Um, I know he's got a ton of match later. Hopefully you win. <laughs> I'm pulling for you, bro. Um, but welcome to another episode of Free Game. Again, free, unrestricted, game, life, advice. Um, hopefully you guys get something from it, and, and this helps you with some thing. Thanks for having me, Luke. Appreciate it, homie. All right, for sure.